there's a field of knowledge in Eastern philosophy called Vedanta. And Vedanta is considered the highest knowledge, the ultimate knowledge, the deepest knowledge of the nature of life. And it's really remarkable how consistent uh, Vedantic knowledge is uh, with modern physics, what a lot of the modern physicists are saying. The idea that there's one thing that is the source of everything. It's the essence of everything. It's the essence of who you are. It's the essence of who I am. It's the essence of everything in creation. Trees, the essence of every tree is that one thing called the unified field in the West. And that's the study of that is Vedantic knowledge. Now, if at the depth of your being, you're one with everything, the idea is that it follows that at the depth of your being, you know everything. Knowledge dwells deep within. Hmm? And it's really beautiful that in the creative arts, even in the field of science fiction, what happens is people are free, you see, to access that depth of their being. And in the movie The Matrix, it so beautifully displays Vedantic knowledge that I thought we'd do just a whole series or uh, talk about different quotes out of The Matrix and how I think what makes The Matrix really work is that it's written on that, from that very deep level. So when the viewer watches it, it works for them. The basic premise works for them because at the depth of their being, they already know truth. <coughs> and the matrix kind of enlivens that within their own awareness. So, uh, I have some quotes here, and we'll just go through them one at a time. Morpheus, at one point, says to uh, Neo, he says, uh, do you think that's air you're breathing? In Vedic philosophy, in Vedantic philosophy, this is all Maya. It's all illusion. And in the movie The Matrix, the idea is that well, it's a Hollywood movie, so it's based on you know some sort of fictitious theme, but it's based on the idea that some aliens landed on Earth or some such thing, and they realized that human beings made good batteries. So they took human beings and they hooked them up to wires so that they could power things, and they created this Maya, this illusion, this fantasy world called the Matrix that everybody thinks they're living in, but really they're not. And that's quite sim similar to Vedantic knowledge. This is the field of Maya. It's the field of illusion. So Morpheus says to, to Neo, he says, what is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signal, signals interpreted by the brain. It's very interesting that even modern physicists, just like the ancient Vedantic seers, said that all of this is just the play of consciousness. It just is birthed out of the one thing that is the source of everything, that is consciousness. And if you think about it, even your own experience right now, how do you know that your senses, that your perceptions, that this world is, is actually anything other than the deception of the five senses? It's an illusion. It turns out in Vedantic theory that it is. It's called the field of Maya, the field of illusion. So in the movie, it's really, people can relate to it because again, you know everything in the depth of your being at the very depth of your being, where you know everything, you know that this field, this world we live in is a matrix. It's, it's Maya. It's illusion. Now, that might sound a little frightening at first, but once we put all the pieces together, don't worry. It, it all does come together in a very beautiful way. Uh, Morpheus says to Teo, have you ever had a dream, Neo, so real that you were sure it was real? That if you were unable to wake, as if you were unable to wake up from that dream. You see? 
we get so immersed in this field of maya that we're completely convinced that it's real. Whereas in Vedantic knowledge and also in the, um, in the Matrix movie, they point out that reality transcends, is beyond the Matrix. Um, so Morpheus, <laughs> Morpheus says the Matrix is everywhere. It's all around us. Even now, in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. I like this last line in that quote. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. So the pursuit of knowledge, see, isn't an outward thing. You don't find it in the matrix. You find it deep within the self, that level that transcends the matrix, transcends the world of maya, the world of illusion. There's a nice line in there when Trinia says to uh, Cypher, Cypher is kind of like the bad guy, you know. She says, uh, the matrix isn't real. And Cypher responds, he says, I disagree. And that's very <clears throat> compelling. Uh, there was a student that uh, there is a student. She studies with me. And uh, once I talked to her about why don't you just come and do some deep meditation courses and really you know go go for it, go for awakening to that which lies beyond the field of Maya. And uh, she, she, her response was there. She says, "I just want to stay in the real world." <laughs> and so I said to her, "Do you?" really think that pinball machine you're living in is the real world? You see, there's a level that you can awaken to in life that still lives in the field of Maya, the field of illusion, the matrix, but at the same time sees beyond it. It's not an attitude. It's not a philosophy. It's not a belief system. It's a state of physiology. It's a state of awareness. It's a state of consciousness. And that's, that's, that's the whole point, really, that, that it's experientially brought to the viewer in the movie The Matrix. A lot of times people get up and we walk out of that movie and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it, my whole relationship with what I used to think was reality has now changed, do you see? Trinity also says the Matrix can't tell you who you are. Now that's, I mean, that's so loaded, you know, really, because how do people go about trying to figure out who they are? Oh, what's my life's purpose? What's my work? Who am I? There's even a, a uh, technique that psychotherapists will use. You know, who are you? And people might start out pretty superficially. Well, I'm a, you know, uh, accountant. And then whatever the person says, the psychotherapist says back, no, who are you? And so she keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. And and it uh, doesn't lead to enlightenment, believe me, but nevertheless, it does point in that direction of taking a deeper look at who it is and what it is you really are. And to understand who it is and what it is you really are, you have to look beyond the matrix. The matrix can't tell you who you are. You see? <clears throat> so I think we'll take just a little break. And that was basically, we could call that the field of illusion. We just talked about the field of illusion, the field of Maya, as it's described in the matrix. And what we'll do next is we'll talk about the nature of the awakening, the nature of an enlightenment, the, the experiences as it's described in Vedanta and how it parallels uh, the, what goes on in the, uh, the movie The Matrix when Neo awakens to his true nature. Okay.